Hey guys, it's Lionel here. Sorry that I've been missing in action. It's just that I've started my master's degree and I just had so much to do and I just couldn't find a way to fit in making YouTube videos into my schedule. But I'm back now. I will keep my promise of holding your hands and showing you how to learn Japanese step by step. And this is me continuing. So sorry for missing. The updates for you guys right now. I'm in my, my student accommodation. Um recording this video I uh, shaved my goatee uh, just because I was feeling spontaneous but yeah I'm still good just a bit stressed because I'm doing my computer science degree and it's a lot of stress but good thing for you guys is that I'm in the midst of learning the skills required to be able to then soon make add-ons for you because I have a lot of add-on ideas for learning Japanese that I want to create for you but I haven't got the skill set yet and hence why I'm doing a master's in computer science so I can create these things. So look forward to that soon when I've acquired a skill set. But that's enough about me. Time to get on to today's video. Today's video is going to be about how to download a Japanese keyboard and then also how to use it. So let's get straight into the video. Knowing how to use a Japanese keyboard and having one on your PC will help you speed up the process of you learning Japanese. That's because it'll allow you to make sentence cards quicker, I like to search words in the dictionaries quicker because you can just type up the words and also just help you search up for your favorite artists, your your favorite Japanese artists who if they have kanji in their name you can just type in the Japanese and then the kanji will automatically pop up. So having a Japanese keyboard has a variety of advantages. So without wasting any more of your time let me show you how you get this Japanese keyboard. So first thing you're going to do is click the link that I've put in the description. It should take you to this website. It's in Japanese but um I think you can translate it, but if you just follow what I'm doing on the screen, it shouldn't be too hard. So as you can see here, just, so I'm gonna click here, this button here, Windows Banner Downloader, which means just download Windows version. If you have a Windows, I think there's Mac somewhere. I don't know if they have a Mac version. If you have a Mac, then I don't know what to say. Go ahead, click that. You're gonna click, uh, just accept and install. Then it should bring up this pop-up here to install it. Uh, you click open file. I just put in my password. It's just connected to the entity, wait for it to install. I'm gonna wait for it. I'll skip this part in the video. So yeah, then this should pop up. In, um, I know that Windows already has its own Japanese keyboard, but I remember when I used to, like Japanese IME or something like that for Microsoft, but I remember it being quite glitchy. So because it was quite glitchy, I just stopped using it. And I just prefer, I just remember just preferring this keyboard better. So this is why I'm showing you how to get this keyboard. So it says set Google Japanese input as my default IME. Yep. Disable keep. Yep. Uh, okay, cool. So I'll click OK. And when you click OK, that's it. So once you ha once you have it installed at the bottom right of your computer, you should see the sign here. This this is the Google Japanese keyboard. And you could see the letter A here as well. That means you have it installed and it's there ready to go. Now let me move on to things you should know on how to use the Japanese keyboard. So number one. To switch between your English keyboard and your Japanese keyboard, you simply just hold Windows button and press the space bar. You see, now you can see popping up on my screen, it says English United Kingdom and it has Japanese Google input. So just holding Windows and space bar, switch between them. Easy, right? Now I can see here, it'll say ENG, which means I'm on my English keyboard. Now I'm on my Japanese keyboard, the Google one. Number two, when you first, I think on most, for most computers, when you first install the Japanese, the Google Japanese keyboard, it will, the, 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 the Microsoft version of the Japanese keyboard will force it to automatically go onto your list of different keyboards. So over here, you have three keyboards. You have the English keyboard, the Japanese Google keyboard, and then you have the Microsoft Japanese keyboard. And having that that third one in the way is quite annoying because you have to cycle through three keyboards or you just want to have two. Um, so the way you get rid of that, I'm gonna show you right now. So you can only have your English one and your Google Japanese one because they try to I think they try to force you to use the Microsoft one. So what you can do, you go here to the bottom where it says ENG. You click that. You go language preferences. Click on that. It will open up this. You then. Then, then it should take you to to this sort of page and then if you have the the microsoft one here it should be like a third a third box here you click on it 
you click on it. So for example, if this is the Microsoft version, um, you click on it, click option, and then the Microsoft version should be like round here. And then you just click on it and then you click remove. Doing that, the Microsoft, if you remove the Microsoft IME, then you should only have two keyboards, your English one and then your, Jap your, your Google Japanese input. Next thing you should know is that when you switch the when you switch to the Japanese keyboard for the first time by pressing Windows and Tab, you'll see here at the bottom right it has a has a the letter A, the English letter A. If you type, that means it's in English mode. So if you type, look, it'll still be in, you know, in English. So if you want to change it to start typing Japanese, you just click on that letter A. It will change to the hiragana letter a and then you can start typing in japanese hiragana see now it's ready to start typing japanese and kanji and so on the next thing you guys should know is that whenever you switch text fields like for example if it said look so the last thing i clicked was this text field right and the last mode that i'd left that text field in was in the typing japanese mode so if i type hiragana look it's in japanese However, when you switch text fields, for example, if I was to open up um, Anki, when you switch text fields, when you switch text fields, it will switch back to the English version of the Japanese Google input. So now if I click here, this text field here, you can see it's turned back on the bottom right, it's turned back into the, to the English version. If I type Hiragana, it's in English. So I have to switch it back to the, to the Japanese version, then I can start typing. Don't worry. Whenever you switch text fields, you only have to switch to Japanese version once. Once you click back in that same text field, it will be in the last state that you left it in. So if I go back to the Google one, if I go back to the Google text field, okay, I lied. Just, you know, just know that, you know, whenever you switch text field, it should just, you know, you just click on that and you can switch it to the hiragana and whatever, katakana. Now let's move on on how to actually use the Japanese keyboard. Using the, using the Japanese keyboard is quite easy. As you can see, I have my notepad open. If you want to type something in Japanese using the Japanese keyboard, all you have to do is know the romaji. You have to be able to just type it in romanization and then it should, then the different options of words that it thinks that you're, you're, you're trying to write will come up. So if I type in the word kanji, so switch to my so to, to write kanji you just type let me put it in english k-a-n-g-i if i switch to my japanese keyboard and type the same thing k-a-n oh can so you have to type you know the raw magic so double n j i and then the different options of words it thinks i'm talking about will pop up and all you have to do is press the down arrow to cycle through them to see the different possible options up arrow to go up and then choose the one I want and click press enter. Simple. If I type in kanji again, you can also press spacebar to cycle through them as well. If you just tap spacebar, you can cycle through them to go down and hold it down to cycle through all the different options that come up. Make sense? Now, if you want to search your favorite song in Japanese, for example, everyone's favorite song by Yoasobi, Yoru ni Kakeru, Yoru ni Kakeru, boom, you know, there it is. Yoroni Kakeru. One thing you should also know, one thing you should also know is that the more you use the keyboard, it will start memorizing the words and phrases that you use a lot you, when you're using the Japanese keyboard and it'll start recommending them to you at the top of the list. So if I use the word, so once you, you saw earlier that when I typed kanji, oh, remember earlier, how when I typed kanji before, the one that was at the top was the kanji, was this one to do with feeling. However, it's seen that I've used the word kanji in terms of the, the Japanese characters more often. So now it's moved it to the top in priority so I can type quicker. So it will speed up your typing process and it also works for phrases. If it, start, if it sees that you're always saying ohayo all the time, or ohayo minna, like all the time, it will have that phrase at the top of the list when you type in or heart or something. So it's a pretty good keyboard. It remembers your phrases and your sentences, even sentences. I'm telling you, it will remember those. So it's pretty useful. As I said, 
as I said before, if you know the, if you know how to write the raw magic of the word, then you can type it in Japanese using a Japanese keyboard. But I'm gonna teach you some of the tricky parts now, and then I'll put a tutorial to the rest of the more easier stuff in the description. I watch that will teach you everything in the description. First thing I teach you is if you want to make the mm like sort of sound letter the mm the mm character, you type double n double n on the keyboard. So double n and there you go. So when I say n, I mean like for example, kon nichiwa, kon double n nichiwa. That's how you do that. Some more examples include onna as in woman. That's there. The kanji will pop up there. You can see there. Boom. Onna. So double n. If you want to use katakana, just type the word that is supposed to be in katakana onto your keyboard and then it will suggest that word for you. So if I was, for example, a word like keiki, which means cake, type in ke ki, and it'll pop up as the first, as the first character, keiki. There you go, and you got the, the katakana there, press enter, boom. That dash there that popped up, I just see, I just type in ke, and to write the dash, I just typed dash on the keyboard, that, and then put ki, keiki. You know, so just, um, just type this, K dash dash key. That's what I typed on my keyboard. The next thing I'm going to show you is how to make small sized characters. So you'll see this a lot on social media. For example, are if I want to type in are, you know, with like the whole it, like I'll just show you how what I mean. So it's are. So that you see that it's are like with the small e character. If you want to make that small e character, what you would type. Is so that you type in a ah, there and then x for, if for the, before the, the the character that you want to make tiny you type x and then you put the character that's what i type so r d r e e x e so a r e x e and you can see it shrank and this works with any letter so if i want to make like um titty <laughs> So I type in T E, sorry, T E X I, and you see T T E X I T, so T T, <laughs> you know. So that's to get the little E character. Makes sense. X before the character that you want to type, and it will make it a, the, the, the half-sized version. <clears throat> and that's about it for this video. If you want to know more details on how to use a Japanese keyboard. Um, I'll put a link in the description to, to the website Tofugu, to, Tofugu's website, and it has a whole like article on how to use a, the Japanese keyboard. But essentially, just, it just comes with practice. Like I've told you the the main stuff, the, the little tricky parts and so on. But as I said there's no raw magic, and you can just type you know words in Japanese and then and that's it. So yeah, that's it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it and you found it helpful. And the next video I should be making is probably either a vlog or me showing you how to get audio so you can start sentence mining. So it'll be the, 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 the next video will be probably me teaching you how to get audio in preparation to teach you how to sentence mine because you need to know how to record audio off your computer. So I hope you look forward to that next video. Ja, matane.